Miletus was the first Bishop of London in the Saxon period, the third Archbishop of Canterbury, and a member of the Gregorian mission sent to England to convert the Anglo-Saxons from their native paganism to Christianity. He arrived in 601 AD with a group of clergy sent to augment the mission, and was consecrated as Bishop of London in 604. Miletus was the recipient of a famous letter from Pope Gregory I known as the Epistola ad Miletum, preserved in a later work by the medieval chronicler Bede, which suggested the conversion of the Anglo-Saxons be undertaken gradually, integrating pagan rituals and customs. In 610, Miletus returned to Italy to attend a council of bishops, and returned to England bearing papal letters to some of the missionaries. Miletus was exiled from London by the pagan successes to his patron, King Sarebert of Essex, following the latter's death around 616. King Ethelbert of Kent, Miletus or other patron, died at about the same time, forcing him to take refuge in Gaul. Miletus returned to England the following year, after Ethelbert's successor had been converted to Christianity. But he was unable to return to London, whose inhabitants remained pagan. Miletus was appointed Archbishop of Canterbury in 619. During his tenure, he was alleged to have miraculously saved the cathedral, and much of the town of Canterbury, from a fire. After his death in 624, Miletus was revered as a saint. Early life The medieval chronicler Bede described Miletus as being of noble birth. In letters, Pope Gregory I called him an abbot, but it is unclear whether Miletus had previously been abbot of a Roman monastery, or this was a rank bestowed on him to ease his journey to England by making him the leader of the expedition. The papal register, a listing of letters sent out by the popes, describes him as an abbot in Francia in its description of the correspondence, but the letter itself only says, abbot. The first time Miletus is mentioned in history is in the letters of Gregory, and nothing else of his background is known. It appears likely that he was a native of Italy, along with all the other bishops consecrated by Augustine. Journey to England Pope Gregory I sent Miletus to England in June 601, in response to an appeal from Augustine, the first Archbishop of Canterbury. Augustine needed more clergy to join the Gregorian mission that was converting the Kingdom of Kent, then ruled by Ethelbert, from paganism to Christianity. The new missionaries brought with them a gift of books and all things which were needed for worship and the ministry of the church. Thomas of Elnham, a 15th century Canterbury chronicler, claimed that in his day there were a number of the books brought to England by Miletus still at Canterbury. Examination of the remaining manuscripts has determined that one possible survivor of Miletus of books is the saint. Augustan Gospels, now in Cambridge, as Corpus Christi College, MS 286. Along with the letter to Augustine, the missionaries brought a letter for Ethelbert, urging the king to act like the Roman Emperor Constantine I and force the conversion of his followers to Christianity. The king was also encouraged to destroy all pagan shrines. The historian Ian Wood has suggested that Miletus' a journey through Gaul probably took in the bishoprics of Vienne, Arles, Lyons, Toulon, Marseille, Metz, Paris, and Rouen, as evidenced by the letters that Gregory addressed to those bishops soliciting their support for Miletus' a party. Gregory also wrote to the Frankish kings Clotha II, Guderic II, Thedebert II, along with Brunhilde of Austrasia who was Thedebert and Thedric's grandmother and regent. Wood feels that this wide appeal to the Frankish episcopate and royalty was an effort to secure more support for the Gregorian mission. While on his journey to England, Miletus received a letter from Gregory allowing Augustine to convert pagan temples to Christian churches, and to convert pagan animal sacrifices into Christian feasts, to ease the transmission to Christianity. 
Gregory's letter marked a sea change in the missionary strategy, and was later included in Bede's Ecclesiastical History of the English People. Usually known as the Epistola ad Miletum, it conflicts with the letter sent to Ethelbert, which the historian R. A. Marcus sees as a turning point in missionary history, when forcible conversion gave way to persuasion. This traditional view, that the epistola represents a contradiction of the letter to Ethelbert, has been challenged by the historian and theologian George Demacopoulos, who argues that the letter to Ethelbert was mainly meant to encourage the king in spiritual matters, while the epistola was sent to deal with purely practical matters, and thus the two do not contradict each other. Bishop of London. Exactly when Miletus and his party arrived in England is unknown, but he was certainly in the country by 604, when Augustine consecrated him as bishop in the province of the East Saxons, making Miletus the first bishop of London after the Roman departure. The city was a logical choice for a new bishopric, as it was a hub for the southern road network. It was also a former Roman town. Many of the Gregorian mission's efforts were centered in such locations. Before his consecration, Miletus baptized Sarebut, Ethelbert's nephew, who then allowed the bishopric to be established. The Episcopal Church built in London was probably founded by Ethelbert, rather than Sarebut. Although Bede records that Ethelbert gave lands to support the new episcopate, a charter that claims to be a grant of lands from Ethelbert to Miletus is a later forgery. Although Gregory had intended London to be the southern archbishopric for the island, Augustine never moved his episcopal see to London, and instead consecrated Miletus as a plain bishop there. After Augustine's death in 604, Canterbury continued to be the site of the southern archbishopric, and London remained a bishopric. It may have been that the Kentish king did not wish greater episcopal authority to be exercised outside his own kingdom. Miletus attended a council of bishops held in Italy in February 610, convened by Pope Boniface IV. The historian N. J. Hyam speculates that one reason for his attendance may have been to assert the English church's independence from the Frankish church. He also brought back the synod's decrees to England. No authentic letters or documents from this synod remain, although some were forged in the 1060s and 1070s at Canterbury. During his time as a bishop, Miletus joined with Justice, the Bishop of Rochester, in signing a letter that Lawrence wrote to the Celtic bishop urging the Celtic Church to adopt the Roman method of calculating the date of Easter. This letter also mentioned the fact that Irish missionary bishops, such as Dagon, refused to eat with the Roman missionaries. Both Ethelbert and Sarebert died around 616 or 618, causing a crisis for the mission. Sarebert's three sons had not converted to Christianity and drove Miletus from London. Bede says that Miletus was exiled because he refused the brother's request for a taste of the sacramental bread. Whether this occurred immediately after Sarebert's death or later is impossible to determine from Bede's chronology which has both events in the same chapter but gives neither an exact time frame nor the elapsed time between the two events. The historian N. J. Hyam connects the timing of this episode with a change in their overkingship from the Christian Kentish Ethelbet to the pagan East Anglian, Radwald, which Hyam feels happened after Ethelbet's death. In Hyam's view, Sarebit's sons drove Miletus from London because they had passed from Kentish overlordship to East Anglian, and thus no longer needed to keep Miletus, who was connected with the Kentish kingdom, in office. Miletus fled first to Canterbury, but Ethelbet's successor Eadbald was also a pagan, so Miletus, accompanied by Justice, took refuge in Gaul. Miletus was recalled to Britain by Lawrence, the second Archbishop of Canterbury, after his conversion of Eadbald. 
How long Melitasa exile lasted is unclear. Bede claims it was a year, but it may have been longer. However, Miletus did not return to London, because the East Saxons remained pagan. Although Miletus fled, there does not seem to have been any serious persecution of Christians in the East Saxon kingdom. The East Saxon see was not occupied again until Sed was consecrated as bishop in about 654. Archbishop in death Miletus succeeded Lawrence as the third Archbishop of Canterbury after the latter's death in 619. During his tenure as Archbishop, Miletus supposedly performed a miracle in 623 by diverting a fire that had started in Canterbury and threatened the church. He was carried into the flames, upon which the wind changed direction, thus saving the building. Bede praised Miletus a sane mind, but other than the miracle, little happened during his time as Archbishop. Bede also mentioned that Miletus suffered from gout. Boniface wrote to Miletus encouraging him in the mission, perhaps prompted by the marriage of Ethelbert of Kent to King Edwin of Northumbria. Whether Miletus received a pallium, the symbol of an archbishop's authority, from the Pope is unknown. Miletus died on 24 April 624 and was buried at St. Augustine's Abbey in Canterbury that same day. He became revered as a saint after his death and was allotted the feast day of 24 April. In the 9th century, Miletus' feast day was mentioned in the Stowe Missal, along with Lawrence and Justice. He was still venerated at St. Augustine's in 1120, along with a number of other local saints. There was also a shrine to him at Old St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Shortly after the Norman Conquest, Gesellen wrote a life of Miletus, the first of several to appear around that time, but none contain any information not included in Bede's earlier works. These later medieval lives do, however, reveal that during Gesellen's lifetime persons suffering from gout were urged to pray at Miletus a tomb. Gesellen records that Miletus of Shrine flanked that of Augustine, along with Lawrence, in the eastern central chapel of the Presbytery. Citations. Carad A. B. Holford Strevins and Blackburn Oxford Book of Days p. 170. Carrot, Saint. Miletus of Canterbury. Catholic Online. Accessed on 12 November 2009. Carrot A. B. Walsh New Dictionary of Saints p. 420. Carrot A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q Brooks, Miletus, Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. Carrot Bede History of the English Church and People p. 111, or in other editions of Bede, at the end of Chapter 6, Book 2. Carrot Church, Paganism in Conversion Age Anglo-Saxon England, History p. 164. Carrot Higham Convert Kings p. 96. Carrot Meyer Heart Incoming of Christianity p. 64. Carrot Brooks Early History of the Church of Canterbury p. 9. Carrot Bede History of the English Church and People pp. 85-86. Carrot Meyer Heart Incoming of Christianity p. 62. Carrot Colgrave Introduction Earliest Life of Gregory the Great pp. 27-28. Carrot Lapage Anglo Saxon Library pp. 24 25. Carrot A.B. Marcus, Gregory the Great and a Papal Missionary Strategy, Studies in Church History 6 pp. 34 37. Carrot Wood, Mission of Augustine, Speculum p. 6. Carrot Marcus, Gregory the Great's Europe, Transactions of the Royal Historical Society p. 26. Carrot Bede History of the English Church and People pp. 86-87. Carrot Spiegel, Tabernacular, of Gregory the Great, Anglo-Saxon England 36 pp. 2-3. Carrot Demacopoulos, Gregory the Great and the Pagan Shrines of Kent Journal of Late Antiquity pp. 353-369. Carrot Fried, A.L. Handbook of British Chronology p. 219. Carrot Brooks Early History of the Church of Canterbury pp. 11-13a. 
Carrot Wallace had all beads ecclesiastical history of the English people p. 39. Carrot Higham convert kings p. 115. Carrot Brooks early history of the Church of Canterbury p. 13. Carrot A. B. Blair World of Bede p. p. 86-87. Carrot Stanton Anglo-Saxon England p. 112. Carrot Hindley Brief History of the Anglo-Saxons p. 36. Carrot Campbell Observations on the Conversion of England Essays in Anglo-Saxon History p. p. 77-78. Carrot A. B. Higham Convert Kings p. 137. Carrot Higham English Empire p. p. 202-203. Carrot A. B. Lapage Miletus Blackwell Encyclopedia of Anglo-Saxon England. Carrot Higham Convert Kings p. p. 135-136. Carrot Higham Convert Kings pp. 234-237. Carrot A. B. Fried A. L. Handbook of British Chronology p. 213. Carrot Brooks Early History of the Church of Canterbury p. 30. Carrot Hindley Brief History of the Anglo-Saxons p. 43. Carrot Farmer Oxford Dictionary of Saints p. 366. Carrot Haywood, Absent Father, Journal of Medieval History p. 217 Footnote 72. Carrot Nilsson Cathedral Shrines of Medieval England p. 36. Carrot Gem, Significance of the 11th Century Rebuilding, Medieval Art and Architecture at Canterbury p. 